Good morning, everybody. You have joined the About to Start uh, Quarterly Everglades Technical Oversight Committee. I'm Julie LaRock from the South Florida Water Management District. Um, glad to have you guys here virtually, which is how most of you are here. Uh, we do have a member of the public in the audience and a few district staff. And uh, fortunately, I am not by myself. Donato Surratt is here uh, representing the park. So uh, just to get things started. And hopefully, if anybody's having any issues, you can um, get a hold of Violetta. <laughs> She's here as usual. She has her email out there. So if, you, if you're having some kind of issue, please let us know. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you guys, we have kind of a hybrid situation. We have a handful of people here in person, and many of you are here virtually via Zoom, so glad again to have you here. I'd like to identify the folks who are here via Zoom. Um, you would all be logged in as panelists, and I know we already did mic checks, but you got to do a mic check for everybody else now. So, uh, Mr. Barquette. Hello. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. And for the other TOC reps, that would be, uh, let me just see what the list looks like. Dan? Good morning. Dan Crawford, TOC rep for the Corps of Engineers. Okay. Lori's here, I think. Yeah. Good morning, Lori with the Refuge. And thank you, Donato, for keeping Julie, <laughs> keeping her company this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our other rep who's on the line is Ed Smith. So, Ed, could you say hello to the group, please? Good morning, everybody. Ed Smith, DEP. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a variety of technical and legal folks who are also online as uh, panelists on Zoom. I would appreciate it if you could also just introduce yourselves to the group. So let's start with DEP. Hi, this is Jordan Tedio. And good morning, Monica um, outside town software to DEP. Okay, Charles, thank you. Kenny Heyman, uh, inside council, in house council. Okay, I know you guys could not hear Kenny very well. That was Kenny Heyman. And Mylene? Hi, good morning. This is Mylene from the EP, Oper. Okay, we have anybody else from DEP online as a panelist? Okay, next we have Department of Justice. You want to just unmute and say hello, Brooks? I think this. Okay, uh, DOI. Anybody as a, a panelist on Zoom from DOI? Okay, Dilip, you unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you. I'm just letting you know. Um, uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Dilip Shinde from National Park Service. Over. Thanks a lot. Um, let's see, who else do we have here? This Julie scrolling with the wrong hand. Uh, Jim, you should be able to unmute yourself and say hello. I did see a comment somewhere coming in from you. Unless we accidentally have your alter ego. We have an individual here at the district named James Riley, so maybe that's the issue. Uh, who else do we have? We have uh, Julia, did you want to say hello? Good morning, this is Julia LaMonaco from the Office of Council at the Water Management District. And then the only other person I'm seeing here is Phil. Did you want to introduce yourself also, please? Hi, this is uh, Phil Steffen from the Office of Council at the Corps of Engineers. Great, I think we got everybody. Thank you all so much for checking in. Um, Again, if you're not speaking and you're on Zoom, please mute your phone or whatever device you're using. Um, and you should listen from one 
source, but we all know that doesn't always work perfectly, so just do your best. Um, if you are using a regular phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star 9, and you can unmute your mic by pressing star 6. Okay, so that's just a little reminder of how, how to work everything. Uh, we will take public comment before we take a vote, but I'm not seeing anything we're expecting to vote on today, so just to let you know that. Um, we will take public comment at the end of the meeting for today. And uh, unless you are here in person to provide written public comment, we're not going to uh, take written comments. And we do have one person here. Um, let's see. Chat is for technical difficulties, so just kind of keep that in mind, you guys. And uh, Jim Riley will work on whatever's going on with your issue. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, next, to let you guys know, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the website. So just to give you <laughs> a flavor, and it's all the usual uh, cast of characters. So uh, we do have an instructional link there for you if you're participating via Zoom. And we have the third calendar quarter documents. And today's meeting is the one where we're briefing about the third calendar quarter, which ends September 30th of 2022. We've got the settlement agreement report. We have a QA report, as well as the data that was used for the quality assessment report. And then we have the data tables. Uh, we've got refuge TP compliance, provisional Shark River slough tracking, and Taylor slough and coastal basins tracking. So all those items are on the TOC webpage. The agenda is posted there, as well as our agency's public meetings calendar. And then we have read-aheads for today, which are kind of slim. Uh, we've got the agenda there and the settlement agreement report presentation that we'll be hearing from Chelsea. And we have the draft notes from the December meeting. And we did have a couple of minor changes on the web page. So we had a couple of documents. We had to correct some typos. And we did circulate the draft notes to the reps, and we got a couple of comments that have been incorporated into the version of the notes that are on the web page now. So anything there? Okay, great. Um, next question is, does anybody want to modify the agenda for today's meeting? So this is John Barquette. I did have a, a few questions in relation to the letter that I received, and I figured this is an easy place to ask them. Uh, I didn't hear Ms. Coleman on on the uh, uh, roll call. I don't know if she's on the phone or not today. Uh, you know what? I didn't see her, but let me look on the other side. I see a hand raised, and uh, I don't know who that is. I'm not going to call on you, but we'll get to you. I don't I see... Said, Julie, uh, that's Stephen Bartel. Al, he's with DOJ. I think he's sitting in for Judith Coleman. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Devon, maybe you could unmute Stephen just so he can say hello or whatever he has his hand raised for. <laughs> thank you. So whenever it's appropriate, I just have a couple of questions. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and you're with DOJ, right? Sitting in for Judith, as Julia mentioned. Yes, good morning. My name is Stephen Bartell. I'm an assistant chief here in the Department of Justice. I am Judy's supervisor. And Judy is going to uh, try to join in. She may have joined by now, um, but she is dealing with a personal matter with a family member at the hospital. And so it is possible she won't be able to join, um, but I, I am here. Great. Thank you so much. And then I see a hand raised. Uh, maybe Ed put his hand back down. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Barquette, if you wanted to do that now and then we can move into the rest of the meeting, that would be fine. Thank you. Let's do the uh, settlement agreement report first. Okay, great. I will put you on, the, uh, on my handwritten note list here. All right, so let's go on to the meeting notes from the December meeting. Those are posted on the webpage, and they have been circulated 
uh, to the reps already. Do I have any comments or changes we need to make to those notes, or are they okay as is? Julie, I have no comments and appreciate the modifications that were made. Um, so I do motion to approve these notes. Okay, thank you, Donato. Do I have a second or other comments, Ed? Julie, I will uh, second Donato's uh, motion that we accept the notes with the edits as uh, provided. Okay, great, thank you. Lori and Dan, are you guys okay with that? I am, obviously, but. This is Dan, I concur. And this is Lori, I concur. All right, great, thank you guys so much. Our next agenda item is the one and only Chelsea Q. We're going to talk about the quarterly settlement agreement report. Uh, and this will cover the period through September 30th of 2022. So, uh, Chelsea, take it away. find the pointer. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Bucket, TSU reps. Thank you for having me to present the settlement agreement report for the third quarter of 2022. So third quarter marked the end of water year 2022 during which we assess the annual compliance for Shark River Slough and Taylor Slough and Coastal Basin's inflows to Everglades National Park. Uh, but the results for Shark River Slough are still provisional. While we are still waiting for the final flow data uh, coming in April, so we'll present the final results um, during the next meeting. But for um, Taylor Slough and Coastal Basins, the water year 20, 2022 results are final. For the refuge, we have monthly assessment results for July, August, and September. So starting from this summary table at the top for the refuge, those results are for individual month. So for July, August, and September, the observed geometric mean TP concentration shown in this uh, second column were consistent below their respective long-term levels uh, in the column next to it. And the marsh stage was relatively stable, and we couldn't collect all 14 samples in these months. So move on to Shark River Slough in the middle portion of this table. We have water year 2022 provisional results shown in the September row. So the flow weight mean TP concentration for water year 2022 was 10 part two, uh, 10.2 parts per billion, which was 2.6 parts per billion higher than the long-term limit. The percent of sampling events greater than 10 parts per billion was 50% higher than the guideline. For Taylor Slough and Coastal Basin, shown in the bottom portion of this table, we have the water year 2022 final results. Um, and it's shown on the September row. So the flow weight mean concentration for water year 2022 was 5.1 parts per billion, uh, well below the 11 parts per billion limit. And the percent of the sampling events greater than 10 parts per billion was uh, 4%. Uh, actually, we only had two sampling events higher than 10 parts per billion. So this slide focuses on the refuge. So here, the monthly marsh stage is depicted by this stepwise line with a purple sheeted background. And uh, this red line represents 
the long-term levels uh, serving as standards to meet, and it's inversely related to the state. And those dots represent the monthly observed geometric mean TP concentrations of samples we collect in the marsh and need to stay below the red line. So blue dots indicate in compliance and red dots indicate excursions. So we had one excursion in June and another excursion 20 months prior but we don't have an exceedance because exceedance is defined as having two excursions within a 12 month period. And so far up to the February, um, every month after June, the observed geometric mean were below the long term levels. Um, we just need to monitor the next three months till May and after which we'll be out of the woods. So the geometric mean TP concentration over the 36 month average, 36 month, the average was 6.8 parts per billion, um, while the long term living average, long term level average is 9.4 parts per billion. The slide shows the similar information, but uh, stretching the long term levels to a zero line. Um, again, the 36-month average TP geometric mean was 2.6 parts per billion below the long-term level. And this is the outlook table. So we'll talk about the top three months, and that the next five months still look good. As I said, um, every month the TP, uh, the observed geometric mean TP concentration were below the long-term levels. I move on to Shark River Slough. Here, uh, the, we have the water year 2022 provisional results shown the, in the last row. So the total flow for water year 2022 was 1.06 million acre feet which results in the long-term limit of 7.6 parts per billion. And the flow we mean TP concentration was 10.2 parts per billion, uh, 2.6 parts per billion higher than the long-term limit. So for historical compliance status, the red line indicates the long-term limits and those blue bars represent the annual flow we mean TP concentration. Here, the last hatched bar represents the newly added water year 2022 provisional uh, TP concentration. And to the left, these two blue bars represent the two most recent years. So for water year 2022, we met the compliance. Then after COP implementation, we exceed the limit for water year 2021 and 2022. And this slide displays the daily flow as structures over the past three years. So here the red line represents the flow released by S334 around the corners and to South Dade. So above this red line is the net flow that uh, went into Shark River Slough. Um, since the COP op operation, uh, most of the flow, very little flow passed by S334. For water year 2022, all the discharges that um, delivered in uh, L29 Canal went to Shark River Slough. So this slide displays the daily flow sent into Western Shark River Slough via S12 A, B, C, D from the top to the bottom. So S12 A and B had a, a really small flow. You can see at the, um, in this third quarter. And S12 C had a little bit more 
uh, discharge than S12AB, but most flow discharging into Western Shark River Slough came from S12D. And this slide displaces flow center into uh, Northeast Shark River Slough between S333 and S334. So the top two panel represents flow from S33 and S33 North, which contribute 95% of flow sent into Shark River, uh, Northeast Shark River Slough. So in this uh, third panel, this represents the flow pumped by S356, and only the flow under this yellow shaded area is counted towards compliances. Compliance because it represents flow coming from water conservation areas. This slide shows the similar information, information between uh, S333 and S334. Again, this uh, above this red line is a net flow that sent into Shark River Slough. And this slide displays the net flow that's sent into Shark River Slough in this blue bars on a biweekly basis. And those sign dots represent the phosphorus level. So this biweekly flow and TP concentrations serve as the basis for calculating, calculating the 12 month flow with mean TP concentration. Uh, for tracking purpose. So here the TP concentration follow the stage patterns in an opposite way. So I'll talk about more when we see the stage lines. So this slide add a, a, a string of diamonds representing the 12 month flow weight mean concentration ending in each month for uh, tracking compliance. And the water year 2022 fall at the last blue diamond and at 10.2 parts per billion. So I want to focus on this slide. Uh, so this slide uh, shows the Shark River Slough system conditions over the past three years, focusing on three key parameters. The 3A stage at the top, this blue, uh, solid blue line, TP concentrations in the middle, uh, those yellow dots, and the Shark River Slough inflow at the bottom with the shaded blue background. So we know that under COP operations, when this uh, solid blue line representing 3A stage fell below this uh, green dash line, and the operation is classified as zone B, where the timing trail flow formula controls release from 3A to Shark River Slough. So first, we examine the 3A stage. So here the solid blue line at the top. The 3A stage was relatively low in water year 2020 uh, compared to water year 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. So water year 2022, about 80% of time, the stage was in zone B, while 2020 was also low. So it's a 70 percent time in zone B, but 2021 was much higher. And we can see those uh, peaks. So uh, secondly, focusing on the TP concentration shown in those yellow dots in the middle, um, the TP concentration followed the stage pattern, um, but in the opposite direction. So when stage was high, then TP concentration was low. And when the stage was uh, receding, reached the bottom, then TP concentration peaked around May, uh, above 30 parts per billion. Then when stage recovered, TP concentration decreased 
Now it's uh, hovered around 10 parts per billion at the end of the water year. So it's a similar pattern every year. Uh, lastly, most importantly, we want to focus on the Shark River slew inflow shown in this um, blue shaded area. So below this royal blue line is the net flow that's sent into Shark River slew. So the, um, water year 2022 was, uh, had a relatively low stage and dry condition. So only it's getting wetter after mid-September when the Hurricane Ian arrived. So by mid to September, the flow already surpassed one million acre feet. Um, back then, the rainfall was only about 45 inches. And so what we see is substantial flow despite the low stage. And as I said, the flow continued without any gap and all these flow went into Shark River Slough, delivered to L29 Canal, went into Shark River Slough. But what a year 2020, um, and you can see that there's a flow gap for about seven months, so the flow sent between this period actually was, uh, went to around the corner released by S334, to South Dade that didn't go to uh, Shark River Slough. So overall, what year 2022 is a uh, low stage, but substantial flow. So move on to Taylor Slough and Coastal Basins. Uh, we have the uh, final what year 2022 results uh, shown in the last row. So the total flow was 320,000 acre feet, and the annual flow with mean TP concentration was 5.1 parts per billion, uh, well below the 11 parts per billion limit. Um, this slide shows the historical compliance status, and those blue bars represent the annual flow with mean TP concentration. They are well below the long-term limit fixed at 11 parts per billion. And this slide displays daily flow at the, the inflow structures over the past three years. And here at the top is uh, representative flow uh, at S18C in the middle for G737, and at the bottom represent, the purple shaded area represents flow from uh, S332D. So overall, S18C and S332D are the major flow source contributing 95% uh, of the inflow. Uh, so this slide displays the magnitude at the individual inflow structures uh, from top to bottom, S18C, G737, S332D, and S328. And you can see again, S18C contribute about a one-third of flow for a water year 2020, and S332D contribute about two-thirds of the flow. So flow at G737 S and S328 is, uh, were always small. Yeah, note that the skills are different. And this slide shows the daily flows in and out of S332D flowway. Um, here the, the inflow source, water source from the upstream was from S332D pumping, shown in this purple shaded area. And portion of flow carried by S332DX1 to the CY11 South detention area shown in this red line. So everything below this red line was excluded from compliance calculation. And this a portion of flow moved downstream and then carried by S328, moved to Taylor Slough, and shown in this neon green line. And S328 was closed uh, during the 
dry period and uh, it's open and continued flowing uh, during the third quarter. Actually, just September. September, you can see that's flow. So this slide shows the sampling event flow in those blue bars and the cyan dot representing the T TP concentrations. And again, you can see for one year 2022, we only had two sampling events in the dry season in April and June uh, that were above 10 parts per billion. So most time, the TP concentration was below seven parts per billion. So this slide uh, include a string of this damn line uh, ending each month tracking the 12 month flow with the mean TP concentration. And uh, what year 2022 falls uh, uh, at the last blue diamond, which is a 5.1 parts per billion. And this concludes my presentation. Do you have any question? Great, thank you, Chelsea. That was really good. Uh, does anybody have comments or questions for Chelsea? Hey, Chelsea, this is Dan. Um, I would really appreciate the presentation. Uh, just if you would real quick look at, pull up slide 11. I just want to confirm that uh, slide 11 yes. should actually, the, the, the period in the wet season of 2022, that should actually be 333 north that's indicated, not 355 alpha bravo, consistent with uh, slide 8. Slide 8. 355s haven't been open all Fly year. Slide 8. Over. Yeah, see, there's no 355s showing on on that one. So I just I think it's just like a label error on slide 11. So just a minor uh, edit. I, but I appreciate all the in-depth overview. Over. And thank you, Dan. If thank you. Uh, I see what you're saying here, we'll get that corrected and repost the presentation for folks after the meeting. Okay. Anything else for Chelsea? Hey, this is Lori with the Refuse. Just wanted to say thanks, Chelsea, and no comments. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lori. Hey, Chelsea, good job. Um, I just wanted to add similar to Lori's comment. Good job. And just looking at actually slide eight, I do want to point out that we are appreciative of the benefits we've been receiving from COP, and that's evident here on, on the lack of flows going through 334, meaning all of that water is being pushed right into Northeast Shark River Slough, which has needed this ecological lift for decades. So we're, we're proud to see what we're seeing there. Thank you. Thank you, Donato. Uh, I was just to ask you, Ed, any comments or questions for Chelsea? Uh, no, no comments. Just uh, thank you again. You did a great presentation, uh, as always. So thank you so much, Chelsea. Oh, thank you, Ed. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if you are an attendee, just remember we will take public comments at the end of the meeting. So our next agenda item, uh, if you want to call it the inserted agenda item. Mr. Barquette, I believe you indicated you had some questions or comments you wanted to address to the attorneys. And also, I did want to point out for folks, uh, Judith was able to join the meeting. I think I saw her on the list here a few minutes ago. So, Mr. Barquette? Yes, thank you. Uh, that's actually disappointing news because she should be with whoever it is that has the health issue. And that's much more important than this matter. But um, thank you for coming on, uh, despite your situation. So here are my uh, questions. Oh. Here are my questions. First one is, have any uh, remedies been screened yet? Hi, can you hear me? I can. Yes, we sure can. Thanks, Judith. Yeah, um, uh, the state parties will might be able to explain this this better without background noise. But um, there was an initial um, list, I think, of eleven 
potential kind of contemplated remedies um, that that were sort of you know conceptual, notional that might be um, a result of this. But um, and that was sort of set out at the beginning of of this work. But the, nothing has been, um, as far as I know, tested or further narrowed from what's going on because while well, the studies are still going. Um, but uh, my count co-counsel can or opposing counsel can uh, clarify that more if need be. Would someone else like to add to that? Charles, I see you've unmuted yourself. You have a I, was, I was going to like the third Pagolia if she can hear. Regarding the district? Yes. You sound, like you're, you sound like you're in a cave. No, I'm, I'm in an office. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Uh, Hi, this is this is Julia Lamonico. Um, yes, there there was a, a list of, of eleven remedies, as Ms. Coleman said. Um, the consensus amongst the principals and the um, working group was that these studies were needed before any remedies could be further narrowed, um, and so these studies were actually part of of that um, initial list and and thinking. No, no, very good. I, I'm not uh, quarreling at all. I appreciate the letter very much, and I appreciate the thought that went into it and the work that's being done. And as I think I've written uh, before, this consent decree was not designed to punish, but to succeed. And and so I, I have no quarrel with doing the research. The, the timing, uh, obviously, is not something that uh, I can control. Uh, and I and I appreciate the observation that it was faster to work this way than to do it through an adversarial process. I was not suggesting that it would ever have to be an adversarial process. Again, the goal of all goal of the decree is for parties to work together so that this will turn into a success. Um, but we have uh, a footnote that says that the the water the exceedance in water year 2021. Uh, the word likely is used uh, here is sufficiently similar that what the work's being done now will likely inform remedies for the 2021 exceedance. And now it looks like we're looking at um, a 2022 exceedance as well. So three years in a row. I don't know whether the work that's being done will inform 2021 and 2022. Um, my my question about screening remedies was really focused on the timing that's described in the letter. If uh, the results of the studies are going to be announced in June, and by my count that this is uh, almost March, so March, April, May, in three months, um, and then recommendations are going to occur in September, I was really focused on whether remedies have been refined in light of the work that's been done. If you're going to have recommendations in six months, presumably there will be uh, some identification of remedies before six months, uh, which means that presumably they're being worked on even as the uh, findings are being finalized. Um, if you're going to have recommendations in six months, I just work backwards from there. And that's why I asked about remedies being screened. I'm, I'm not at all surprised they were screened at the beginning of the process. My question is, have they, be, have they been refined as the, the knowledge base has increased? Um, and why don't we start with that question? And Mr. Monaco, if, if that's for you, then I appreciate your insights. Sure. Um, the working group has not yet provided a refined list of remedies. However, that does not necessarily mean that they're not working on that. Um, they just have not um, provided any sort of additional list uh, to the principals. Um, but that's certainly something that we can check in on for you, Mr. Barquette. Well, here, let's do it this way. Um, what I'd like to do is just get a status report in 45 days so by april by april 15th 
if you can just report in on the status of any remedy identification uh, items that are still on the list. And then if you could also explain then, you don't need to do it now, what is it about the 2021 exceedance that makes it similar to the 2020? And um, you didn't comment in the letter because it's still provisional data, but it looks like 2022 is headed in the same direction. And so if you could add to a April 15th uh, status report, if you will, you can do it again by letter, uh, at least what the working group's initial views are of the 2022 uh, provisional data, which may well be finalized by April 15. Uh, I just wanna make sure that council stay on top of this, because uh, if, if we're really gonna get findings in June and recommendations in September, that's spectacular. Is it going to address this 2020 or will it also address 2021 and 2022? And if it's going to address 2021 and 2022, um, what is it about both of those exceedances that make the working group confident that the uh, remedy or remedies or recommendations, as the case may be for remedies, uh, will also address those two? So that's a mouthful. I, I know you've all taken notes. Uh, but if, if you could just do that, uh, what I'd like to do is a report April 15th and then another one 45 days later on June 1st. Uh, keep, just keeping everybody informed of the progress because uh, I'd like council to stay on top of this to make sure that we're, you know, we're moving along. Uh, it's been three years. Maybe that's what it takes. I'm not suggesting that that isn't uh, expedient. Um, given uh, the comp complexity of both uh, the sediment study and the hydrodynamic study, because I'm sure they're complex and I'm sure these are difficult issues. But I don't want three years to turn into four years or, or three years to turn into five years. And so um, I'm sure council is on top of this because you're officers of the court and you know as well as I do um, the interest in this project uh, within the public. So. I appreciate the letter very, very much. I thought it was very well done. And uh, let's do another uh, sort of update by April 15th and then another one by June 1st. And then hopefully in our next meeting sometime in June or whenever it is, we'll hear the recommendations or the findings, if you will, uh, from the two studies uh, leading to the recommendations later later this year. That's all that I have. Uh, uh, special Master, this... Yes, go ahead. Uh, um, this is Judy Coleman, if I may ask one clarification question. You say status report. So is this, uh, for this letter, we emailed it um, the letter's fine. to you yes, fine. and then it was posted. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We don't uh, need is, to find is it. Is it the same report. process of sending it to yes, you Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly the same process. Okay. No need to file anything okay. in court. As long as, as long as I know that council's heavily involved in monitoring the progress and, and keeping everybody on their toes, um, that gives me confidence that we will we will make progress. Julia, you understood. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is uh, Julia Lamonico again. I just, if it's okay with you, I'd like to repeat back to you um, your request so that I can make sure that I've got it straight. Very good. Okay, so you're looking for a status report on April 15th and within that report, you would like there to be a status update on any remedies that the working group has been uh, focused on or refining for the purposes of the studies. Um, you would also like um, the working group's initial views on the 2022 exceedance and the 2021 exceedance, what makes them sufficiently similar to the 2019 exceedance such that these uh, studies would also apply um, to any remedies for those exceeding that's correct and then you would like the same report um, yes Th that's correct they may not have answers okay. yet but as long as you as long as you uh, provide their their current um, knowledge on these issues uh, I'm not expecting anybody to finalize anything I just want to make sure that you stay informed and then keep me informed as to the progress that's being made on, on both the, uh, you said 2019, I thought it was 2020, but maybe it was 2019. Um, the 2021 and 2022 exceedances 
how why they're similar. At least that's the, the footnote three says that the TOC and the principals have agreed that the 2021 exceedance shows sufficient similarity to the 2019 exceedance, such that any recommendations to a remedy will likely inform the identification of a remedy for the 20. 21 exceeds why is that the case and then what's the preliminary thinking on 2022 uh, in that same vein so yes you've got all my questions you take very good notes great thank you thank you both of you all of you uh anybody else with uh, mr barquette here any other comments or questions okay great Thank you very, very much, you guys. Um, we'll go on to public comment, and then we will look at future meeting dates. So do I have any public comment? It looks like I've got somebody here in the audience, and you can grab a microphone if you'd like. I guess that one, right? There's no name tag next to it. Uh, hold the button down until the green light comes on, if you don't mind, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul Julian, Everglades Foundation. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, it's exciting to be here and talk to you guys in person. Uh, good, great job on the presentation. Thank you for all the, the information that's in there and uh, kind of putting into the context for Shark River Slough um, and the exceedances that the potential exceedance as well as the, the prior exceedance. Um, it seems a little bit shocking to me in the three years, give or take, of implement of COP that we've had two exceedances. Um, and I vaguely remember in the development of COP that uh, there were several adaptive management measures that were identified, I think, to potentially mitigate any impacts to water quality, considering that the modeling that we evaluated indicated that we would be exceeding the long-term limit uh, pretty frequently under COP. Um, and so in the 2022 and 2021 exceedances, uh, I guess the question is, were any of the adaptive management measures, if there was such thing, um, used to attempt to reduce the, the potential impact to water quality going into the park? Um, if so, what were they? And if not, why not? Um, because I am vaguely remember us having several very in-depth meetings talking about that and the potential to reduce those. So. Um, if I'm completely, um, you know, dreaming this thing up, uh, let me know. Uh, but I vaguely remember us talking about it. So thank you, thank you very much, and uh, I'll keep in touch. Thanks. Thank you very much, Paul. You know, we don't normally uh, do <laughs> responses to public comments, uh, but we'll, I wouldn't shock me if somebody wanted to weigh in. Do we have anybody else who'd like to make a public comment? I'm going to. Mute myself for a moment while I switch screens. I do not see anyone else in the room, nor do I see any of the attendees on the line with your hand up. So I'm assuming we don't have more public comments. So thank you all for that. Uh, now, we've, <laughs> we've just talked about some dates with a special master, and now... Uh, I have some more dates to throw at you guys. So uh, we need to figure out when we're going to hold our next meeting. Um, and I would prefer if folks would kind of think about the fact that once the data is finalized for Shark River Slough, you know, we rarely see big changes. Um, and this would have to be a really big change if it's not going to result in an exceedance. And so just think about that a little bit while we're looking at meeting dates. Uh, we've got several that we talked about previously, and I'm going to kind of quasi-omit one, actually, because we've got, got some other things that have popped up on that date. But um, the dates we do have available, April 25th, May 2nd, which is a date that we would like to avoid if we can, uh, May 16th. So those are the three dates available for our next quarterly meeting. Um, and we did reserve a date in June in case we needed a special meeting. So if we could take a look at those and choose a date for our next meeting, that would be great. I'm kind of voting for May 16th, but the date in June is June 13th. Um, 
I'll break the silence. This is John Barquette. May 16th would, would work for me. Thank hey. you, Mr. Barquette. Anybody else? Ed, I see Julie. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, May 16th does not work for me. I have uh, the Blue Green Algae State of the Science Symposium on that date. Okay. Uh, one of these other dates good for you, Ed? All the other dates work for me. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Lori or Dan? What do your schedules look like? Sorry, I've been sitting here looking through my calendar. Um, yeah, right now, um, of course, I have this penciled in for May 2nd, but um, the other dates will work. And June 13th also sounds like kind of a, a good time since hopefully we'll have some results from the, the 333 working group. So looks like this they're all good John, for me though. This is John Barquet. Unfortunately, I am not available June the 13th. So you guys want to back up to May 2nd and we'll cancel some in-house training I have planned. <laughs> right, let me look. Uh, hey, Julie, this is Dan. Just confirming I have no conflicts with any of those four dates. So I'm flexible at the whim of the, the order. I, I, and I'm sorry again, this is John Barquette. May 2nd is not good for me, at, at least not at 10 o'clock. Okay. Do it in the I could do it in the afternoon. I could not do it in the morning. Um, boy, have we ever moved a meeting to the afternoon? I'm not clear we uh, want to do that. I, you know, I don't know if you guys want to bump it up to August. That seems kind of far out. So, where do we land? Somebody can't make June thirteenth. I forgot who that was. Uh, this is John Barkett. I, I, can, I cannot, and that's not something that I could change. No, that's okay. That's all right. Julie, did anybody have a problem with May 16th? Yeah, Ed oh. from DEP. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got to present at the symposium on May 16th. Gotcha. Did you want to have your alternate meet with us on the 16th, Ed? Um, that was my I, next question. I don't have an alternate. An alternate? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we run into Sunshine State issues when we when we have alternates. We just have a very small office, so having an alternate would be challenging. It prevents them from meeting, like with the working group and whatnot. Sure. Well, I don't know if this has ever happened before, you guys. Did you want to wait until August to meet? We could meet on August 1st. August 1st works for, for my calendar, but that does seem quite far out. Uh, you guys, Stuart is uh, in the peanut gallery here, if I can call it that. Uh, we could try to find a date that the storage room upstairs might be available, because um, the dates I'm throwing out right now are auditorium available dates. Would it be all right with you guys if we emailed you uh, later on today to try to find another date? That'll work this for is Lori with the refuge. Sounds good to me. Yeah, this is John Barquette. That's fine. I suggest that we at least hold August first on everybody's calendar because that works for me. And and then uh, and then let's explore as you propose uh, another date when the other room might be available. Okay. Thanks for your patience, everybody. <laughs> Scheduling is an issue, even if it's not a public meeting for some of our rooms here. So we appreciate that. Uh, we will do our best to get something out to the reps and Mr. Barquette before the end of today, but uh, be a little patient. We're a little slammed with a whole lot of things going on right now. So uh, in the next day or so, we'll get you some alternate dates that we could uh, use for this. Okay. Hey, Julie. Yes, this ma'am. Is, yep. This is Lori with the refuge. And again, I mean, it looks like June is like three to four months out. So that's, 
really kind of good timing and with uh, Mr. Barquette's request for a report June 1st, I'm sorry, yeah. And then also the results should be in from the 333 working group. I'll tell you, mid-June sounds really good or the end of June. And somebody please remind me, did somebody say June 13th is not good for them or? Yeah, Mr. Barquette. Oh, yeah, right. okay, I, thanks. The, 13th, the, the best day for me in June, quite honestly, is the uh, last Tuesday. I'm, I'm, I'm not available the 13th and I'm not, if we're going to do this on Tuesdays anyway, I'm not available on the 13th and I'm not available on the 20th. I would be available on the 27th. I am available on the 27th. Uh, what, uh, I think, Lori, you just said you're available on the 27th. What about yes, anybody ma else? That works for my calendar. It works for me, Julie. All right. So we will... Dan's just telling us he'll, he'll make himself it does, available. The 27th doesn't work for me, but I can work with Jim and we can have the core alternate attend if need be. All right, so we'll email you guys with some more proposed dates and hopefully get something decided in the next day or so. And for those of you who have uh, called in or listening in on Zoom from the public, we will do our darndest to get the date posted on the TOC webpage as soon as it's decided so that you all know when the meeting will take place. Um, yeah, I really don't remember... Uh, all these years having such a scheduling issue, but uh, I, I appreciate everybody uh, trying to help keep things on track. Okay, so thank you all so much. I don't have anything else for today, so uh, thanks a bunch for participating or listening in today, and we will uh, regroup and uh, hopefully have some more information at our next meeting in a few months. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.